To say that our government doesn't represent us would be a gross understatement because to say that they're out of touch and elites, I feel like that's fairly obvious. But I actually think it goes deeper than that. The issue is that a lot of these people in Congress are genuinely psychotic. And before you say that I'm being purposefully hyperbolic, just consider their priorities for a moment. As Kenny Stansel of Common Dreams explains, the Biden administration's March request for $813 billion in military spending for fiscal year 2023 already marked a $31 billion increase over the current historically large sum of $782 billion during its markup of the the National Defense Authorization Act, the House Armed Services Committee approved by a 42 to 17 margin Representative Jared Golden's amendment to boost the top line budget by $37 billion. The House panel's increase comes less than a week after the Senate Armed Services Committee voted to add $45 billion to Biden's $813 billion request pushing the upper chamber's total proposed budget for national military spending in the coming fiscal year to a whopping $857.6 billion, including $817 billion for the Pentagon, $30 billion for the Department of Energy, and an additional $10.6 billion that falls outside NDAA jurisdiction. Now, ask yourself this. Do you recall a single pundit asking how we're going to be able to pay for this, considering the deficit and the national debt? Has anyone on mainstream media asked, how is it that we can prioritize an expansion of our already bloated military budget, but yet we can't afford um, education, healthcare for our residents? You probably haven't heard that. But what you did hear conversations about with regard to fiscal responsibility was a really important program to feed children in the United States. So at the beginning of the pandemic, the U.S. Department of Agriculture put in place an initiative that would expand meal waivers to students, allowing millions upon millions of students to eat school lunches for free without accumulating school lunch debt. And for international viewers, you didn't miss here what I just said. School lunch debt is a phenomenon in the United States where students can literally go into debt if they eat school lunches without paying for them. Yeah, that's that's our country. That's the kind of country that we live in here. Um, but unfortunately, you know, the Senate, especially Senate Republicans, didn't want to extend this program for another year. Why? Because they cited concerns about the cost. Now, what is the total cost of extending this program for one more year? You ready for this? $11 billion dollars. Because that's $11 billion that we could be spending on the military or elsewhere, they decided, mm, I just can't go along with this program to feed millions of children in the United States. Now, we don't necessarily know what's going to happen, but currently this program is set to expire on June 30th. And after some pushback, our incredibly reasonable senators are fighting for the people by introducing a 90 day extension. So rather than having this program expire on June 30th, it'll now, it now expire on September 30th of 2022. How merciful, a 90-day extension, so that way when the overwhelming majority of children are out of school, that's when we'll pay for lunch waivers. I mean, we have a government that is incapable of meeting the basic needs of citizens, and they refuse to meet the basic needs of citizens, but yet, without question, from the mainstream media, from many politicians, they're expanding the military budget again. I just, I don't know how anyone can view this government as legitimate because every subsequent year, the military budget gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And yet we keep hearing how it's so expensive and cost prohibitive to pay for health care for every American to feed students. But there's not a peep from these same motherfuckers about the military budget. In fact, they want to expand that. I mean, I'm not saying that these politicians would have a change of heart if they were named and shamed, but if the media at least educated the American people about this double standard, maybe they'd be a little bit more apprehensive about reelecting these same fucking ghouls every two or six years. Now, um, not everyone, thankfully approved of this grotesque increase because Representative Sarah Jacobs of California decided to denounce it and announced that she'd be voting against it. And she also um, 
explained how horrible this is in what I think was a pretty powerful speech. Take a look. Frankly, it's pretty unconscionable that even without this increase, we're talking about a budget of over $800 billion, and yet I will still have constituents in the, in the military who have unacceptable housing conditions. I will still have military families, thousands of whom are on a wait list to get childcare. I will still have over 39,000 members of military families in San Diego County alone who have to visit the food bank every single month. So yes, we need to increase funding for, to expand resources for mental health and housing and childcare. We need to address the impact of inflation on our service members. But these are priorities that we can and we should address within the existing top line number that we have. And if we are really serious about competing with China, we need a better resourced and funded diplomatic corps. We need greater investments in our development practitioners so we have resources to compete with China's investments. We need to invest in our education system, in innovation, in our domestic infrastructure and pandemic preparedness. That is what will determine if we are competitive with China, not whether we have one more LCS. That, as Chairwoman Spear said, doesn't even work. And as the Pentagon themselves said, they don't need. For the last 20 years, we've been told we need more. But I think it's time to recognize that more is not a policy. And yes, we have a lot of challenges, but there are simply not military solutions to every problem. You mean we can't create lunch bombs to drop on schools? If you can utilize the military, deliver these lunches in tanks, perhaps that would make them more inclined to support this because, uh, you know, as long as we're spending money on the military, that's A-OK. -okay. It's truly just, it's ridiculous. And the fact that there are some lawmakers willing to stand up, that's cause for celebration, I guess, but... It's nowhere near enough people speaking out about this. There should be universal condemnation. And when this proposal was announced by Jared Golden, he should be laughed out of the room. But it was approved, overwhelmingly so. Now, one more speech that's uh, worth highlighting is from Representative Ro Khanna, who denounced this in no uncertain terms. Part of me wonders when we're just going to get the amendment to have a trillion dollar defense budget, because it seems that's where we're going. I mean, every year they're basically adding... 30 billion more to what the president wants. And I think that's what we really need to think of on this committee. If you're supporting this amendment, you're basically paving the way to a trillion dollar defense. Is that what we want in this country? A trillion dollars more, more than a half of our discretionary budget is going into defense compared to all of the other needs, the security needs that this country has? Now, obviously, we have major threats with Russia on the Ukraine border, where the president has done an extraordinary job in rallying NATO and standing up for Ukraine. And we passed on large bipartisan majority support for Ukraine, the threat that China poses with Taiwan. But that doesn't mean that we need defense budgets that are more than they were at the height of the Cold War. That was a serious threat, too. But we had the imagination and the innovation to be able to meet those threats without consuming over half our discretionary budget. I just want to be clear, there is no country in the world that has anywhere close to ha over half the major power that's putting over half its discretionary budget into defense. And I would rather for us to be the preeminent economy of the 21st century be investing in the health of our people, in the education of our people, in the industries of the future as we compete with China. Let me just make one more point about China. You know what China is really doing in 2025? They're not putting all their money in defense. They've got a Made in China initiative. They have a Little Giants initiative. You know what the Little Giants initiative is? It's 4,000 startups that they think are in critical technologies that they're funding. They're funding their universities. They're producing engineers and scientists, millions of them. That's what's going to make America lose if we don't invest in the new technologies, if we don't invest in the new companies, if we don't invest in the new industries, if we don't make more things in America. It is easy to just keep upping the defense budget in this committee. I trust President Biden. I would support his defense budget. But what requires more imagination is to actually get production back, to actually do the things that are going to make us win in the 21st century. Yeah, well, I don't trust Biden personally, but his broader point still stands. These countries who the U.S. government has deemed our enemies, they're not 
pouring every single penny that they have into the military. In fact, if you look at defense spending for 2022, the U.S. spends more than the next nine biggest spenders combined. So even if we cut our defense budget in half, we'd still be the biggest spender globally by a lot. But cutting defense is out of the question. However, spending money for healthcare and education and student debt cancellation and on school lunches is always met with concerns of how are we going to pay for it? Healthcare, mm, how are we going to pay for that? Education, how are we going to pay for that? School lunches for children, I don't know how we're going to pay for that. Too expensive, sorry, we can't spend a measly $11 billion. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Um, our culture is perverted and sick and our lawmakers, our politicians prioritize spending on death and destruction as opposed to feeding people, literally. And since Ro Khanna brought up Biden, I think he deserves a special fuck you as well for asking for a higher military budget because sure, the House and the Senate, they want to increase the military budget even more than what he's requesting, but he himself is requesting a bigger military budget than the last year. It's a sick situation and I just don't know how this is sustainable. Because the people, you know, they're already fed up, right? They can't necessarily name what's happening specifically, but they're fed up and it's only going to get worse. So I just don't know how much longer the American people are going to take this abuse, this violence from their government. You know, you, you, you know, you know, the, you know, the thing, thing. You're getting nervous, man, man.